And you, we should have a shiur. Blin it down, as that said. So, okay. So, we are Perek uh, Zayin. We continue. Um, we're just going to recap uh, from Pasuk Yud Gimel that we already spoke about and uh, introduce another Pirush to it and then we continue Yud Dalit. So, Pasuk Yud Gimel. Re'et ma'asea elokim ki mi yuchal letaken et asher iveto. You have to be able, through the Chokhmah and the proper Chokhmah, and we explained that a valuable Chokhmah, proper wisdom, is Tova Chokhmah im Nachala, right? Is a Chokhmah wisdom with heritage. Then you're able to now see what you cannot see when we were addressing Pasuk Chet, right? And what can you see is that there are situations that you are facing that seem to be crooked, that seems to be awkward, but you understand them. You see meaning you understand it. Look at the actions of Hashem. And we, we, when we say, obviously we, we keep on explaining it that when we speak about the name Elohim, we speak about Hashem interaction with us in creation, through nature. Who can fix it? What Hashem twisted. Meaning Hashem puts you in front of a situation, right? Not, don't, don't go and find for answers outside and say, who, who can fix that problem? No. The person that can fix the problem is you because the, the situation you're facing is a reflection of your actions, right? Good? Okay. The Sforno, the Sforno adds that as a layer that is a little bit more religious to it. What do I mean by that? He says, Akadosh Baruch Hu created man to his image. Right? And you should be, when you live your life, look at the at the purpose of the actions of Hashem in creation. Which is what? Which is to, re, to try and reach perfection. To try and get close to Him as much as possible. Kimi Yuchal letaken, okay? There's no way, there's no way that you can actually do, do a, a, a tikkun, meaning do teshuva, right? Et asher iveto while you're still sinning. Says the Svorno, basically, that if you understand, if you really want to fix things, so Try to reflect, since you are the, to the, made to the image of Hashem, what is the purpose of the creation? And if you understand that the only way, what Hashem wants is for you to get close to Him, and the only way you can get close to Him is not to sin, then you realize that if you do Teshuvah, but you keep sinning, nothing, you, you're really not changing anything. You're not serving your purpose. So what the Sonu learns from that Pasuk, uh, from Shlomo HaMelech, is something very interesting. It, it basically says, if you want to fix something, don't drag, don't drag your past. Don't stay connected to, uh, to your bad habits. You want to fix something, you have to stop with the bad habits. You have to focus on the, the change and on the positivity in order to be able to become now part of a, a part of the bigger purpose and this you can only do if you realize and you understand that you were you were, you were created to the image of hashem and because you're you're created to the image of hashem your purpose to connect to hashem can only happen a certain way which is stop the bad in order 
to do good and get close to Hashem and, and become aligned with your purpose. Good? Yes. Pasuk Yudalet. Beyom Tova, betov. When things are good, when you see Beracha, enjoy it. Serve, you know, serve the wave. Take advantage. Take grasp the opportunity. When things are, are good, be opportunistic to, uh, to know what to do with this beracha. But when things are challenging, when things are not going your way, when things are difficult, keep in mind and remember that the reason again, the word Elohim, Hashem created a balance, okay? An equilibrium between you and, the, and, the, and, and what you're facing. This across this, this against this, this compared to this Hashem did. He created a counterbalance. You do an action, it's counterbalance with a reaction. It's like midah keneged midah. So, do, do, when things are good, enjoy, grow from it, be opportunistic, elevate yourself, use those moments to grow as a person, to grow your, your wisdom, to grow your Torah, to grow your, you know, your, your, your family, to grow, your, to benefit from the beracha. But when things are difficult, remember, that the difficulty is a reflection of your actions. Rav, if you yeah. say, we're saying uh, take advantage of the time and grow from it, uh, assume the person does, and, and it's, he does everything in the right direction and, and for the right reasons. It's, it's bound to happen that he has a tough time. Does that mean that he faulted during that period? Or say he didn't do anything wrong. What do you mean? Okay. Ah, okay. So first of all, everybody does something wrong. Let's start with that. Okay, that, that's, that's it. Now, says the Gemara, if a person checked and he has really nothing that wrong that he did, and nothing to do kapara, nothing to do teshuvah on, and he still has his surim, he still has a hard time. These are, these are challenges that Hashem throws on the person out of love to keep him closer to him. Um, you know, but that's, okay. I, I don't know how many people can say yeah. That exactly. what they're suffering not because of their actions, but because God loves them so much, and they have nothing to uh, to, right. to feel bad about. That He wants to keep them. Uh, you know, that's it's unlikely, but I just wanted to ask. Yeah, it's it's ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time is is the reaction of our actions. And but and by the way, in the beginning of the pasuk, what does it tell you? Be opportunistic. What does that mean? Grow into the good. So if you know what to do with the good and you're growing with the good, then you're just empowering more good to come. Right. Instead of being passive and consuming the good, you be proactive and create more good. Yep. But, but Rav, could there be both? Could there be one, you're being punished for your actions, and the other side is your actions led you to this place where you're, where you're feeling down. It's, that you're saying the same thing? No, one could be a, a punishment from Hashem. No, wait, 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 there's no punishment from Hashem. What does that mean, the punishment? Oh, there's not. Okay. What does that mean, the punishment from Hashem? When you sin and you feel oh, like yeah, you know, things actions. are going wrong it's, because it's, it's you- your, It's your actions, right? Mm. It's your actions. At the end of the day, if you sin, it's your actions. So it's your action that that yield the reaction. What you're okay. referring to is again is an interaction between man that is above the sun, right? 
and right. not below the sun. You're saying, can, that, can, can this dynamic happen? Yeah, for sure it can happen. But right now we're talking under the sun. We're talking about Elohim. Oh, okay. We're talking about Got the Bidat Adin that has been installed and put in place in the, the, the world of physicality and materialism. And how right. Hashem interacts through the world with you based on your actions. Right. Good? So, so, yes, so you could be punished through your actions without feeling like it's coming from Hashem. And you could always find, you could always trace it back to your actions. It's not, you can, it's always like that. It's right. always, again, that's the whole, I mean, what we've been, what we've been addressing, you know, what Shlomo Melech, what the Gaon de Vilna, uh, brought to our attention is that there is a dynamic between man and nature, which is not nature, which is a Kadosh Baruch Hu, okay, through nature, that is basically a reaction of your actions. That's right. an, an, an energetic dynamic. I'm get, I guess I'm talking more about when there's a tragedy or something like that, where you're not related to it, like to, to the outcome, but you're still suffering from it. How could that be tied to your actions? Okay, so the fact, the fact that you're suffering emotionally from it, okay, doesn't mean you're being punished. Okay, an emotion ha is an emotion, right? It's not your struggle. Now right. you can you can you can choose to be uh, to react emotionally, but that's between you and yourself. Right, you're right. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that that's makes nothing sense. to yeah. do with your interaction with creation. Right, it's all what's going on in your own head. Exactly. How 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 you choose to see it. Exactly. Okay, makes sense. Got it. So so again, so Shomu Amena says, when things are good, that means you have a good actions. Generate more of that good actions. Benefit from it. Because that will create a dynamic of good, a snowball effect of good. And if, has the other way around, when times are difficult and challenging, reflect on your actions to understand where it's coming from. And don't run for answers outside yourself. Don't start dumping the problem on others and blaming the world and its mother for something, for something you're suffering from. No, it has to do. It has to do with you. Okay. Ken. Al diberat shelo imsah adam acharav meuma. When a person, when a person starts understanding that Hashem, that Hashem is. Uh, is behind everything, right? So it's very hard to go and tell Hashem, ah, you're at fault. Right? So if you understand that you're the responsibility, then you cannot dump the responsibility on Hashem. Correct? Okay. Yes. So basically, what what basically what Shlomo Amelech says, we're in Pasuk uh, Yudalit. What what Shlomo Amelech says, surf the wave because it triggers a snowball effect of good. When things are challenging, stop blaming the world and start looking at your actions and understand what yield, what actions created this challenge. Because when you go like this and you understand that you're in a system, okay, and you were made to the reflection of Hashem, and that your actions create a reaction, so at that point, you, you can take the blame and change instead of throwing the blame on Hashem, which is uh, usually the, the easiest way. Like, like you say, ah, oh, yeah, it's punished, it punished them for this, it's a punishment for that, or whatever it is. No, 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 understand that it's your action. And it's not the punishment. You, you take a glass of crystal, you throw it on the floor, it breaks. It's not a punishment. It's not a punishment. 
<laughs> you broke the glasses. The reaction of reaction. <laughs> Dan, I think you're echoing. Et akol ra'iti bime hevi. Everything I saw in my uh, in my mundane life, in my in my life when I was busy with heaven, when I was when I was uh, when I was thinking, you know, when I was learning about the heaven and uh, and what's under the sun. And now he says something very difficult. Yes, tzaddik of Betzitko. We we see that some tzaddikim they perish despite the fact that they're good. Yes, Rasha, ma'arich b'ra'ato. And uh, you have the Rasha that lives a long life. The famous question of tzaddik v'ra'lo v'rasha v'tovlo. You know, the famous question that everybody asks since Moshe Rabenu, since the beginning of time, we see people that do bad and it seems like they could live a good life. And you see people that do good and they suffer in life. He says, I saw it all. I've seen every dynamic, every dynamic. And it's very important for Shlomo Amelach to introduce now this pasuk, because what 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 has what did he say just before that? If you're suffering, right, it's your action, right? But if it's a di, how can a rasha benefit? If he's a rasha, how can you? Why does he have it? He has it easy and he has a good life. So he says, "Et akol ra'iti." I've seen it all. I've seen it all. In the, you, you have a lot of situations that are going against against a uh, another contradiction of, uh, of. By the way, it's another contradiction in the, in the, in the, in this in the spirit. But what he's, basically what he says is that you fi- you have situations that can trigger a lot of questions. Okay. That that doesn't fit always the the general rule. Yeah, it's it's the uh, how we call it the it's the uh, uh, you have the rule and you have the exception to the rule. Except the exception to the rule, the exception to the rule. So he says here he says clearly he says the rule is what we discuss, an exception to the rule, but. I've seen it also, meaning it's out there, it's present. I'm sure everybody, once in their life, has themselves like, this guy was such a good guy. You know, like, Look, he does everything right. Why does he suffer so much? You know? That's, that's part of an existence and of, a, of it's, it's part of your, of the buildup of your belief. If not, it would be too systematic and too robotic and too easy. Good. It's a call right Now, what he wants to say, what Shlomo, so the Svonu says, he says that I think it's, he said the, the, the way to understand this pasuk is based on the next pasuk. He says, you know why there is a tzaddik veralo? Because sometimes the tzaddik wants to do more than he's expected from him. Don't be such a big, uh, a big shot of a tzaddik. And don't try to be wiser and don't learn things that you, your intellect cannot grasp. Why? Because you can end up teshomem milashon Shimama, like you, 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 you made, you basically you can collapse, okay, and you can shimamon, uh, shimamon, you can lose it all, yeah. So says the Swamo says, you know why it's Sadiq Veralo, because he's put in in a situation
He is put in a situation where, where instead of, of, of building himself with his chokhmah and doing teshuva with his chokhmah, he's, 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 he's running after something that is beyond his, his, uh, his scope. For example, just to, to, give, uh, to give a little perspective, like somebody, um, somebody that's learning, that's learning, right? And he's, uh, he's trying to learn, he's learning alachod, but he's still not pre- really practicing. So should he continue learning things that he has no idea of, like a way like, should the guy learn Kabbalah before he knows how to put feeling? Even, even if, it's, if it's intellectually great, use your tzitkut, use your, 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 your wisdom, your chokhmah, your actions to benefit your teshuvah, to fix yourself. If, if it's only something that is uh, spiritual and intellectual and you don't fix your actions, that's why tzaddik oved b'tzidko. The, the tzaddik lose, you know, gets lost with his, with his tzidkut, with his tzedek. Because he's so busy with his growth and disregarding fixing his flaws that at the end, those flaws are, are what he's going to have to pay for. That's the tzaddik veralo. You know, why, you know why he's being punished? He's being punished because he grew tremendously intellectually without, without ever fixing the past. So now you have a tremendous amount of knowledge that becomes like almost like a, a category, like a, a pr- prosecutor to the, to, the, to the past, to the bad actions that were never fixed. It's like, you, you know so much but you, you, ne- you, you never behave, you don't fix your behavior. So when you don't know, and you don't have a good behavior, you don't know. But when you know a lot, right? We don't judge the same, that person the same way now, now that he has so much knowledge with his behavior. So says Shlomo HaMelech, he gets, the tzaddik gets lost, meaning he, he, he he gets punished with his own tzitkut. And here it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very deep, 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 and, and, and even a little bit troubling message. Okay? Because every individual wants to grow. And the nature of, of, of people, as, as systematic and as organized as they can be, they want, people want to thrive. People want to grow fast. Says Shlomo Amelech, it's great to grow, but if you don't handle your, your you know, the, 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 uh, the balanced flaws with your wisdom, what, your wisdom is going to end up becoming your prosecutor. Your growth becomes your, 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 your punishment, no, the no. source of a pure punishment. You know what I'm saying? And he says, this is Tzadik Veralo, says the Sono. This is the, this is the problem. As long as you have a balance, okay? So the balance puts you in a position where you have enough Tzidkut, there's some flaws, and you're focusing on working on the flaws, and, and you gradually grow. And as you grow, the, and you fix your flaws, so the, the flaw is less, but the flawless is still, it's still important because there's more chokhmah, even though the, you, you fix part of this flaw, right? It's like HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't treat every action the same way. The tzaddik is meticulous. It does one word and you can unleash on him. Where you have a person who's Ama uh, Aretz, He's, uh, he doesn't know anything, and he can do all the averot that Hakadosh Baruch is leading. So the, your, your growth has an impact on how Hashem will look at your flaw. 
So, he, so Shlomo says, be careful, be careful not to run, run too fast in your growth be, without fixing your past and your flaws because your growth will end up making your flaws more, uh, oh. more um, uh, worse in the eye. The, it would make, now he makes the, the flaws worse in the eyes of Hashem. We, we see the same concept, you know, Lavan, Lavan, no, not Lavan, Lot, Lot. Lot, when he went to Zdom, he was a big tzaddik. He was a big tzaddik. The second Avram arrived, he became the biggest Rasha. That's exactly the, the message that Shomo is saying. If <laughs> the, you, you, the comparison, the comparison will dictate the gravity of the sin. Right? Depending, depending to what you compare the action to or to your level, that will define the gravity of the sin. So, okay. And that's how, according to the Svono, we have to read the Pasuk. If you understand that, what is the purpose we said in the Pasuk Yud Gimel, according to the Sefono, is that you need to remember that you are to the image of Hashem. And if you, are to the, you were created to the image of God, your purpose is to get close to Hashem. But you cannot get close to Hashem without facing your past. And you're and, and you and doing teshuvah, proper teshuvah, and fixing the flaws. Because if you do teshuvah but you still do averot, then you're really not serving the purpose of getting close to Hashem. That doesn't work. The, the same concept is now applied not towards the teshuvah, but towards your growth. You can grow very fast, but if you don't take care of your past, your past is going to come back hunting you. The same thing, again, another, another mashal, another example, yeah? When you're a nobody in society, nobody couldn't care less except for your social circle of, uh, of, of your behavior. If you lie or you don't lie, or if uh, you, you cheat or don't cheat, or if you, uh, you, did some, uh, you didn't pay taxes for a year. But if you want to become president of the United States, suddenly, Okay, every phone call you made is being scrutinized and blown up as this is the worst mistake in the creation. Yeah, the worst, the worst, catastrophe. I mean, we, we've seen it. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's the name of the game, right? It's, it's Pashut. We, we saw it with, uh, with what's his name, the president uh, that cheated on his wife, Clinton. Uh, Clinton. Now, it's, it's obviously terrible, and right? don't get me wrong. But okay, if everybody's honest, a big percent of husbands cheat on their wives. Okay, so 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 what's the big deal? The big deal is that you're the president. The same thing happened to DSK, Stroskan. He was he was on his way to become president of France, and uh, suddenly. He, you know, his, uh, his personal life became a huge thing, and that's, that's how they disqualify him. Shua Mela says, when you want to grow too fast, and you don't, look, make sure, you don't make sure to fix your past, be careful. This is what will take you down. Wow. <laughs> Lama, Shomen, why, why, do you, why would you want to be Tzadik Arve or Tzadikim Yoter or have to watch Chachma with the Shomen, Shmama, and just uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the, uh, at the end disappear? Why, why so much exposure if at the end it will make you disappear? So in a way he's saying it's, it's better off to grow slowly and have some flaws and continuously correct those as opposed to getting there too quickly and thinking you have no flaws because you're- Absolutely. And it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense. 
It makes, it's, it's pursuit yeah. why. Let, let, let's think about it. Why, how can you allow yourself to grow so fast knowing that you have flaws and not fixing your flaws? Where does that, where does that thrive, that, 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 that desire and willpower comes from? From your ego. Arrogance. If you're not willing to fix your, yourself and grow super fast, it's ego. I don't want to deal with my, 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 my flaws. Why? Because of my ego or because I'm too ashamed or because I'm, I'm in denial. Yet I need to grow very fast because it makes me feel great. I want to feel like a big chacham. I want to be exposed. I want to be known. I want to be famous. I want to be close to Hashem. Even in, the, in, even in, in doing your teshuvah, says Shlomo Amelech. You do your teshuvah because you want to feel connected to Hashem. Hashem, I love you. I love you. Great. Fantastic. But says Shlomo Amelech, what the Shlomo explains, he says, if you do teshuvah, but you're still sinning, like, who are you fooling? You're not taking, don't think, your mitzvot will not wipe out your averot. The wipe out of your past is you wiping out your past, dealing with it, fixing it, owning it, and moving forward. And that's fine. That's fine. People forgive. People forgive. When, when somebody makes a mistake and he comes and he tells you, you know what? I own it. Hatati, aviti, pashati, I failed. I know I failed. I changed. I'm a different man. Okay. Lamalo. That, is there anyone that can say, I, I fail? No, we all fail. And you know what? If you deal with it and you, you own it, you move forward and finish and it's behind us. But when you say, you know what? I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. But you still do it. What happens? You become a fool in the eyes of people. It's worse. It's worse because the second time, okay, the third time, the fourth time, you're, you're, you know, you're a liar. You're a liar. Very, yeah. This, this is exactly is, the answer. I'm sorry? This is exactly the answer to why you shouldn't become a black hat overnight, like I asked the other day. Ah, nahon, 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 nahon. Yes, right? exactly. The growth, the growth process. Right. Rob, you mentioned something about community, um, about Lot, that he was a tzaddik, yes. and then he became a rasha. Yeah. So if, you know what? No, are you didn't. Compared to Abraham Avinu, the second Abraham Avinu went to Zdom, he, right. <laughs> compared so, to Abraham, he was, he was a Rasha. So, so that's my question. So meaning, if, if you live in the Syrian community, as an example, are you judged relative to the others in the Syrian community, or are you judged like every other Jew? Uh, it's, oh, uh, do you know the last, the last Mishnah in Pirkei Avot? No. Yeah. Okay. So the last Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, Appa. hello? Hello? Yeah, here we go. Okay, one second. I want to read it to you. Yeah. Here. Okay? Because it's, uh, it will answer your, your, <laughs> it will answer your question. Actually, yeah. One second, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Six? I'm sorry? Yeah, there's only six party. The last Mishnah, the last Mishnah, last Mishnah. Koma Shebara Kadosh Hold on. Hold on. Oof, I don't use these things, so I don't know. Hold on one second, second. You have it? I have something that says it's 6, uh, yes. uh, 11. Okay, hold on. Okay, about Vav, the last one. And actually, right before that, right before that, because it's all one. And I don't know who, actually, actually, Oh, 
What what is Pirkei Avot? Pirkei Avot. Amar Rabbi Yosi. Amar Rabbi Yosi ben Kisma. Mishnah Tet. Pirkei Avot is a, is a guideline of uh, all the, how, how to to behave based on the Avot. All the teachings from all the Chachamim. Okay, from Moshe Rabbeinu. And how the Torah translated into into deeds and 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 and, and, and traits and behavior, so, so uh, you know socially. So Rabbi Yosi ben Kisma, פעם אחת הייתי מאלף בדerek ופגע ביאדם אחד. A man stopped me and he said, he said shalom. I said shalom. So he told me, מה זה מקום אתה? Where are you coming from? So he told him, מיר גדולה של חכמים ושל סופרים. I come from Bnei Brak, from Yerushalayim and Rakodesh, place. Everybody learns Torah there. He said, Retumecha shetadur imanu bimkomenu, come live with us. I'll give you, I'll give you wealth, I'll give you gold, I'll give you jewels, I'll give you everything. So Rabbi Yossi told him, Afilu, im ata noten ni kol kese vizav, you give me all the wealth in the world, I don't move from, a, I will only live in a place of Torah. Okay? The Chachamim tell us the following. If you live in a Makom Torah, then, your answer, then the answer to your question is yes. But if you don't live in a Makom Torah, there's no, it, there's no, there's no it's not a, it's not, not a re- game of relativity. Yeah. At the end, so then it's never, then it's never really a game of relativity, is it? No, it depends. It depends. It depends. If, again, if the community has a lot of Torah, the question no, is... No, no, I don't mean the Syrian community. I'm just saying in general, right? I think the question, the answer is, is that it's not a game of relativity based on the community. Yet. You just have to be as close to the Torah as possible. Correct. 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 Now, right, because theoretically, yep. the, the biggest tzaddik of the Syrian community could, could maybe not even touch the, the lowest level guy in certain communities elsewhere, theoretically, right? So are they judged the same, right? We don't know that. Because you have, you, you have tzaddikim that are hidden tzaddikim and you, have nothing, you don't know nothing about them. Right. By the way, the reason I ask is because, you know, it's just natural world order that we live in kind of sub-tribes, right? It's just how how it goes. What do you mean by sub-tribe? Meaning there's the Jewish community on a very global level. Then you have the Sephardic Ah, community and the Ashkenaz community. Then within the Sephardic, you have Moroccan and Egyptian and Syrian. And even in the Syrian, you have the people who came from Syria in the last 20 years and the people who came from the last 50 years. Then within that, it's just how kind of life unfolds itself. Um, and, and the question is, is and we, we kind of spoke about this a couple of chapters ago about uh, being as part of a system. The question is, is at what point do you reflect and say, uh, am I supposed to be here and just be the best I can be within this system? Or am I supposed to migrate from a system or what have you? Correct. Correct. So, so it's all, listen, it all depends on the person and his affiliation to, and to, to the Torah and his thirst for the emet and his ability to, to sacrifice his comfort. You know, I know a gentleman who, in France, he, convert, he was an evangelist. He converted, his wife converted, his girls converted, his family, everybody converted. And he moved to a city where there was only Torah. He took out, you know, like he was very high, you know, Aristocratic family, French family, very old money. Uh, he, had, he had a role. He went from, uh, from a, uh, you know, like a big, big house, private house in the middle of a city and moved to a little town where they barely have what to eat, okay? Just because it was a town of Torah. And that's where he wanted his kids to grow. And he gave, it, he gave it up, you know, he was driving Ferraris, he ended up driving like the simplest Mercedes. Uh, and, 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 and for that city, he was like, oh, like he's driving a, 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 a private jet. And he changed his clothing. He, 
you know, some people, that's what they want. You know, when, when they want to connect to DMA, they connect to DMA and, and that's all that matters. Now, further on, sometimes you have to, you know, or you can stay in your comfort zone hidden or you can get out of it and, and go down, you know, like, you know, you leave B'nai Brak and you leave Yerushalayim and you leave those world of Yeshiva and you go down to cater and nurture. So it really depends on the person. And not every, like we said, not everybody has the ability to break through. I understand. So that's the, that's the, that's the danger of growing without fixing yourself out of ego and out of pride. פסוק י"ז, אל תרשע הרבה ואל תהיה שכר, למה תמות בלא עתך? זה שלום המלך, and don't make yourself too big of a rasha neither. Meaning, don't beat yourself up all the time and think that you're the reason of everything. Don't carry the world's burden. And don't think that if there's an imperfection, it's your fault. And don't make your, don't be a fool in thinking, in thinking, in, in the, the emotional translation of a situation. The action is the action, right? The, the situation you're facing is the situation you're facing. And that's a reaction to your actions. How you take it and how impactful it is on you, says to Amelech, don't, don't exaggerate. Mm. Ah, God is punishing me. I don't have mazal. You know how many times people, Rabbi, I don't have mazal. I have a beracha. It's the end of the world. Yo, Habibi, relax. You know, fix your actions. You're going to see that you have a lot of mazal and everything's okay. And stop comparing to yourself to everybody. And things are going to work out. But if you drown into your own misery, because you, you think that you're carrying the world, then, you're, then, then you make yourself a rasha, but you're really a fool. And the Sparlo says, we, you, you know what the fool does when something like this, he says, I have to read it because it's so powerful. אפילו על הרשעים יותר מן הראוי, כאומרו ארבעים יקנו ולא יוסיף. Don't take on too much רשע. ואל תהי שכל, לאסור לגמרי מזכך הישרה אפילו לעסוק בתורה ובמדבות. He says, what, what happens? He says, when you take everything so deeply and so personally, and you're so emotional about it, and you're so reactive about it, and you think that the world is coming to an end. So what, what do you do? You run away to the Torah. You run away to shul, and that's say the world is collapsing. Suddenly, now you learn 10 hours a day. And you pray, you amidas, from three minutes to 25 minutes. That's a big, big tzaddik. That's it, I'm doing everything that. He says, don't be a fool. Don't think that, the, 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 the react, you know, that the situation is so terrible that you need to stop everything, Hayesha, your day, your day to day life, and run to uh, to the Beta Midrash and and believe and think that that's that's the answer. Why would you cause yourself to die earlier than you're supposed to? Says the the svanu, she lo yale biatchal lo ze lo ze. He says, you're not you're not going to fix the problem because you made a big deal out of it. So it's impossible to fix it. It's so dramatic and so big and so overwhelming that how can you fix it? So that's not fixed. And you go to the up the polar opposite and you end up you know, praying like uh, more than uh, than Baba Saleh and learning more than uh, I don't know who. Thinking that that's going to fix, but that's not going to fix anything because you're not doing you're not you're not doing it for the right reason. You don't even know what you're doing. So you, what happened? You, the problem you didn't fix. 
your efforts went to vain, you didn't do anything, and you're, you, you drown into, into distress and depression, and you end up dying out of, out, of, out of terrible emotions. Why? Because of your assessment of the situation. It's because you, you decided to expand and, 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 and dramatize the situation. Try to be as factual as possible, says Shlomo Amelik. The same way, if you grow too much, it backfires on you. But if you make too much drama and you, you carry too much weight and you make a problem bigger than it really is, you're going to end up drowning. Rabbeinu Yonah, in his book, Yesod Ha'ira, Yesod Ha'ira, Yesod Ha'ira, anyways, there's two, it doesn't matter, but it's called, there's two names, they, they, they name it two, two different ways, Yesod Ha'ira, okay. anyways, he says there that the Yetzer Ha'ira comes and tells a person, he says, who are you? You're a nobody. Look, you really think you're going to change? Look at you, you're not changing, you haven't changed the past 10 years, you're going to change today, so stop fooling yourself, you know, it's to change, it's so difficult. And, and the, the, says the, 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 the Rabbi Nuyana, he says Yetzer Ara loves blowing up a problem out of proportion just to keep you drowning, to keep you in the dark. Says Rabbi Nuyana, if you have a little bit of light in yourself, you will fight the drama that's in you and try to stay as factual as possible and by pushing the emotion aside. And only then can you actually tackle a problem and fix it. So if we want to fix the past in order to grow fast, we need to be super factual and, be, and run away from the drama. It says, so what is the, what is the balance? What is the balance? Because what do we see? We see someone that wants to run into wisdom and end up, it ends up backfiring on him. We see the one that drowns into, uh, into drama and, and as, a, as a result, thinks that he has to become a tzaddik and grow uh, a 10 feet beard in order to, do, to, to fix his problem, and nothing happens. So he says, okay, so what's the balance? Hold on, echoz is hold on to whatever elevates you spiritually and makes you grow in Torah and gives you olam haba. However, but don't let go of Hayesha. Don't let go of Parnasa. Don't let go of this world. There's a difference between holding something and not letting go of something. Right. It's all in the focus. When you're holding to some, onto something, you're focusing on holding it. When we say don't let go, you don't focus on holding it. You, you're just making sure it's not, it's not leaving you. So my man says, your focus in life should be what? The direction, the purpose of life, how to grow in Olam Abba, how to elevate myself spiritually. But I'm not, I'm, I will not let go of what, what's vital and what's also important in Olam Abba. Especially when we know, that when you have Parnasa, your Chokhma, is exponentially more impactful. Because if you have both, you, you, are, you are a Yere Lokim. You have somebody that fear Hashem. Yetzed Kulam, and we'll come out of it. In, 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 it will bring out, it will bring out to fruition at Kulam, everything. You will have, you will bring out to fruition your Torah. You will bring out the, part, the, the, the potential of your Olam Abba. You will bring out your potential of this world. You will bring out your potential of Parmasa. 
Here, Shlomo Amelech gives us the secret to success. Secret to success. He says, your focus has to be in Torah, has to be in your, in, in your inner growth, in your spiritual growth. But don't let go of the control over, over the, your, the, your, the, your materialistic aspect of life. And this is the Yer Elohim. This is someone that fears Hashem. Can you repeat that one more time, Rav? Your focus you have needs to, hold to be. On. Your, your, the, the, the main focus is to, in your life should be your spiritual growth. However, you should not let go of your materialistic needs. You should keep the control, right, of your materialistic needs. And this is, says Shalom Ameler, the definition of Yere Eloki, somebody that fears Hashem. And the outcome of this, Yetzet Kulam, he will bring to fruition and to success all the, those potentials. All the potentials. You mentioned an example once in one of our classes about the man who was very, very wealthy, who once a week he yes. dressed like a pauper. Would that yes. be a proper example of that? No. That, no. That's. That's something he did for himself to stay grounded and for his kids to understand that nothing is taken for granted. But doesn't that disconnect him from the physical? Yes, just... no, for, for him it did. For him, again, he, he, he wasn't taught to do that. He did it because he felt that this is what he needs to do in order to create, a, 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 not a balance, but a point of reference to the reality outside his, his walls of gold. Right. So, it, for, 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 it, yeah. again, now, what Shlomo Amelech is saying here, when I wake up in the morning, what do I want? I want to grow. I want to become a better person. I want to be able to be more, more knowledgeable. At night, when I finish my day, I want to feel like I did things. I did something good. My name is a better name. I have a better Shem Tov. I'm more knowledgeable. I understand better Hashem. I'm a better person. This is my, when I wake up in the morning and I say, Modani, this is what I want. Echoz, hold on to your growth, to your spiritual growth. But don't let go of your basic needs. Don't put yourself in a place where you're going to be so troubled by surviving that you cannot think about that. So I, you have to be also able to deal with life and make sure that you have a panasa so that every morning you can wake up and think about that. And when you go at night, Okay, I know I worked well, you know, I did my ishtadlut, and, 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 I, and I grew, and I grew as a person. This is the lifestyle of what we call Yere Elohim. I remember reading in one of the Rashi's earlier, it might have been in Bereshit, that when Hashem blesses you with success and with Parnassah, He blesses you specifically with what you do with your extra time, as opposed to somebody who has to toil more they're not judged on the same <laughs> type of way. But if <laughs> you were blessed and you have Parnassah and, and you didn't work for it or it just came to you, or you got lucky, or everything comes from Hashem. But some people, you know, it's not directly attributed to the hours that they put in. Hashem judges you on what you do with the extra time that He gave you. Absolutely. 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 So this is... This is it's, I mean, <laughs> if, if you really understand the message... You know, he gave us on the golden platter in a, in a very simple way how to, how to bring out the, the, out the most that's in you. Very practical. And it, it's, it's amazing, like, what to do with your knowledge and be careful when you, when you learn and how to deal with, with, with emotions and dark emotions and and it's difficult times, and, and you know, it's, uh, anyways, it's, it's, it's one of the most fascinating uh, chapter in, uh, in the whole Quran. Well, what am I to say that? It's just a personal, uh, yeah. it's an emotion. I'm being dramatic right now, and not a lot. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, Rob. I'm sorry I was late today. No, no problem, no problem.
Thank you, Rob. Thursday, Thursday. Great class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob.